life after football come into your mind, or was it always in your mind? Because, I mean, you mentioned even when you were at Queens that you were thinking about this kind of stuff, you were already looking at this. Uh, when did it really come into your mind, though, that here's my life after football, let me start planning? Yeah, I think it was, I think it was, it, everything was, was backwards for me. Life after football came first, uh, and I say that in the sense that I went to, I went to first year law school uh, in my fourth year at Queens University, so I had already started the, the, the journey to becoming a lawyer before the CFL even was on my mind. That's a wonderful way of putting it. Life after football came first. Yeah, so Absolutely. football was always the add-on. It was always the bonus. Uh, whereas for a lot of guys, football is the is the way to earn a, a, a living. For me, it was just this, wow, really? I get to do this? Okay. Uh, and I find ways to, to ensure that my other career, my law career, was keeping pace, was not going to be held back because of football. Uh, and same with here in doing TSN. Uh, you know, it doesn't impact my practice because I'm able to I come here on weekends and at night, and I don't practice law on weekends and nights. So I've been able to find a way to bring those two things together for, well, since 1989. Since, you know, since I've, been, I've been combining football and law in some capacity for all those years. My goodness. Now, you did it on your own. You had the foresight and maturity at a pretty young age to have all of these kinds of ideas. Is the CFL adequately preparing their players right now for life after football? What goes on? Is there advisement? Is there anything happening for players after they hang them up? Yeah, the CFLPA has, has got various programs to try and uh, ensure that uh, the players are thinking about that. Uh, I know they like to, they'd like to do more, uh, and I hope they do do more because I don't think that your average player really understands what they're going to be faced with when they're done. I mean, you're going to be faced with the loss of – uh, that camaraderie in the locker room, the, the connections and the, and the teammates that you just take for granted now are just, they're gone in an instant. Uh, that sense of belonging to something where you're all striving for one goal disappears overnight when you're, when you're cut or you retire. Um, and the paycheck disappears. And so all of a sudden these guys are trying to figure out how can they fill that void, that rush, that adrenaline, that excitement that they used to get from their job and how do they earn a living. And that can, that can be devastating to players. What can they do? Well, uh, to me, and I tell this to every young player I, uh, who wants to talk to me about it, is that they need to be thinking about it during their careers. Uh, most guys don't turn their minds to it until the day they're retired, uh, or they get cut all of a sudden. All of a sudden what do you mean I'm not on the job? Oh, shoot, okay, what else am I going to do? Uh, football in the CFL is different from the NFL. Uh, they can only occupy you, the teams will only occupy you for four and a half hours a day maximum. That leaves a lot of hours in the day to do something else to improve yourself. Uh, I encourage players all the time to take advantage of those hours, not just squander them playing Xbox or hanging out with their buddies. Uh, and the off season as well. I mean, they've got six months to, to, to yes, to train. So you can only train for a couple of hours a day. What are you doing for those other hours to to move the uh, the, the ball down the field in, in terms of life after? Now, if you had a player who was like, okay, so Jean, what's, the, what's the first thing I should be doing? And should I go back to school? Like, should I start working somewhere? What do you think? Yeah, education is, is the biggest thing for me. I mean, it's, it's tough to find a job for six months of the year. So I appreciate that. You're not going to need that many employers who are going to let you just go off and play football. I was lucky. I found employers to do that. But not, I mean, and it can be done. And lots of players do do that. But uh, if you can't find that job that really uh, fulfills you, then the next thing you need to be looking at is, is an education. You can absolutely get yourself an education in the offseason. Now, have you seen it go sideways? Like, without naming any names or anything like that, have you played with or know any players where you've just seen a career end and thought to yourself, my goodness, what went wrong there? Yeah. And what does happen in those situations? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I must say I don't see it firsthand because the reality is that most of the guys this is going to happen to are the Americans because the Canadian kids do not grow up believing that they're going to be able to uh, play professional football and earn enough money to never have to work again. That's the, that's the American dream. That's not the Canadian dream. Very few Canadian kids grow up thinking that football is going to provide them with that. Hockey, maybe, but you know, almost every American I ever played with was a, was a, was a, was a, was a superior athlete, uh, even as a young kid, and had dreams of playing professional football in the NFL and making millions of dollars and never having to work again. So for those guys who make far less money than the CFL, retire without enough money to support themselves, now having to look at what they're going to do, that's a much more abrupt end than for a Canadian kid who's never understood that's the goal and, and the reality. As a Canadian kid who has always been a fan, actually, part of the attraction of the CFL is that the guys seem like regular guys. I think it's cool to hear about, oh, well, he does this, he's a teacher, or he's a lawyer, or he does this or that, because it, it really adds a relatability, I think, to the players. I think it's something the CFL should really pump up a little bit more in the idea that, hey, 
I relate to these people. It's just like you getting up in the morning. Yeah, for sure. It's, uh, it's something that CFLs always wanted to embrace. Now, you do want to create a bit of a mystique around the, the, the professional athlete, and so you don't want them to be an everyday Joe. But by the same token, you, you want to be able to have conversations with these guys, be able to feel like you can just walk up and, have, and, and talk to them. And you can. Just go to any Grey Cup and you'll see all kinds of players walking around, all the Grey Cup parties, and they're very accessible. Uh, but just to go back to your question, the Americans that crash and burn after they retire typically go back to the U.S. and crash and burn. I don't see that, right? So that's why I haven't seen it close up. I've certainly heard stories. We've all heard stories of guys who've, who've fallen on tough times after their careers were over. But I'd say that Canadian kids typically, not, not, not universally, but typically tend to do better because those expectations were not set at early age. Jacques, you're someone we love talking to. Thank you so much again. My pleasure. This was wonderful. Uh, Jacques Climby, CFL great, friend of Monolith Sports. I'm Andrew McDonald, Monolith Sports in Scarborough.